With a little attention to method, you can have the crispiest fish imaginable. Sometimes the old way really is the best way, and I wanted to put Connie's demonstration of frying fish online so you can have it at home. Although we use speckled perch, also known as crappie, any white meat non-oily fish will work well. So simply use that type fish you like, no matter where you are. And if you're on a budget, you're in luck. All the fish and hush puppies you're about to see fried was done with a single cup of cornbread mix. So a little goes a long, long way. Why cornbread mix and not straight cornmeal? Well, cornbread mix has flour in it, and that seals the fish and keeps its moisture in. And we're going to crisp that seal by adding two tablespoons of cornstarch to our mix, and it seals crisp when the heat of the oil is applied. We fry at 400 degrees, and it doesn't take much oil. Just half the width of your fillets is fine, but if you want to deep fry everything, that's certainly acceptable too. If you're reading the recipes, you've noticed we've salted and peppered the mix because that makes a quick hush puppy batter with the addition of an egg, chopped onions, milk, beer, or anything else you prefer to make a stiff batter with. But you could salt and pepper the fish and make a hush puppy batter separate with just a half cup of mix, an egg, milk, onions, or anything else you prefer in a stiff batter that balls on a spoon. There's three ingredients to crispy frying, and this is a big one. Drain on a wire rack. Use cornbread mix and use cornstarch, and your fish will end up moist on the inside and sealed on the outside for the ultimate crisp texture. Now the traditional fish fries of Connie in my youth were always capped off with coleslaw. And you may not be able to get number five, two tablespoons of watermelon pickle juice, but if you will take two tablespoons of sweet pickle relish juice, you will have a very close result. If you're new, welcome. But a lot of our subscribers have been with us for 20 years now through all 200 plus movies that we've done. And a big series that we did was the final voyage of the mischief for all the life lessons it taught. And it certainly taught me an important one. Everything that you don't need to be happy in life, you know, a big house, a lot of stuff and all that. And after that series, we rapidly got rid of everything, and now we live in a very simple little cabin on the water. But the mischief itself had disappeared from the rolls, and we feared it had been broken up. Well, it turns out it was in a yard in Deal, Maryland, and was discovered by a number of people who looked at it, the last of which are now trucking it to Kentucky as you're watching this movie. But it had been completely gutted and stripped. Uh, it was in a sad state and probably would have been broken up if not for them. So the mischief, it turns out, will have a happy ending. Its name will be changed to First Light, so the final voyage of the mischief, turns out, really was the final voyage of the mischief. Many people are still taking that cruise today, years after we completed it, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to do the same. Many, many happy meals and adventures to you. To all the long-term subscribers, thank you again for your support of Connie and myself through all these years and the movies that we've made and the friendships and associations we've been able to make through them. Thank you again.